Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 36. 36? Jeff Rogers. Fantastic nose on that man. El Capitan. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah not the, the original, but the boxer. Yeah, yeah, that guy was a beast. How man. many broken noses did he have? Probably 36. Probably more broken noses than not broken noses. <laughs> Pretty close, I would yeah. think. Okay, so uh, this week we'll be talking about, obviously, the week in review, but we'll also be talking about... The uh, Pavelski Goal Watch. Oh, yeah. We'll very talk nice. about uh, <laughs> Vlasic's return. Yeah. And uh, the upcoming games for the week. Very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. Okay. Well, I've uh, I've got a joke for you. So, uh, what has webbed feet and has no chance at winning the Pacific Division? Quack quack. Duck, Duck suck. Quack quack. <laughs> I was gonna say you forgot to answer, but hey, okay, we're, we're back, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the Ducks having a rough go. Well, they just fired Randy Carlisle. Yeah, and um, a little too late. But they also didn't hire a coach. <laughs> they just the GM said, "You're out. I'll do it." Yeah. So that'll can't, be interesting. Can't be that hard to be the head coach of a National Hockey League they, team. Can they get worse than they are now? <laughs> so. I think that might have been the point. Like, let's make sure that we do poorly by putting someone who has no head coaching experience whatsoever but is the GM of the team and put them in as the head coach and see what happens. Uh, What's going to happen is you're going to be even worse than you already are, and you're probably going to get the first overall pick. And, boy, Mike Johnson's uh, not very happy with you guys (laughs) right now. Well, look at what Edmonton did. They fired Todd (laughs) McClellan and they brought in uh, Ken Hitchcock, right? right? How much better are they doing? Right. So <laughs> I, a lot of times the coaching changes in midseason don't yeah. pan out anyway. So why fork out the bucks for a big name coach? And you can take your time and, and do your due process and yeah. figure it out later in the summer. This season's already done. So fair enough. The ducks seem to be really cooked at this point. Yep. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the week. So Arizona, it was a pretty good game. Another uh, overtime game that we had there. Yes. Uh, that game was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but. You want to start off with the overtime win part? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I'm no. Uh, I mean, LeBanc first of all, LeBanc getting his sixth goal of the season, so yep. that was awesome. And then, of course, Pavelski getting his 28th. Um, we'll, we'll we'll take it off later on, but yeah. So, um, you know, the the guys are, are showing up, putting goals up. Gotta love it. It was a three two overtime win. Uh, the overtime goal, actually, if you wanted oh, to, to jump into this Brent one, that was Burns, a great one. Man. Yeah. He he pinched. Uh, was it? Oh no, he didn't pinch. He was deep in the zone, and I forgot who. Hurdle it got cycled to him. back to him, yeah, on right. the boards. And he, I think Burns noticed that the, it was Richard Panic. It wasn't a defenseman, yeah. it was a forward. That was the last man back. And um, he just burned, burned Panic yeah. and uh, took on Kemper and, and beat him far side on the on the glove side. But it was a beautiful goal. If you haven't seen it, you need to look it up and watch <laughs> it. Um, amazing how large of a man Brent Burns is at, I think he's 6'3 or something and 230-something mm-hmm. pounds, and he moves like he's a 50 pounds lighter, <laughs> smaller guy. So he's very agile. He has, his mitts are just dirty. Yep. So he probably had to take a long shower after that game to <laughs> clean his hands. No, I mean, I, I thought that the Sharks got better as the game progressed, right? Um, there was uh, quite a few chances, shorthanded chances mm-hmm. even, and they just seem to look like, again, we see them kind of giving up early goals. Uh, we've seen this kind of as a trend, you know, they, in the first couple minutes or so, they give up a goal and they have to come back. Well, you know, this is one of those games where they, they got better as the game progressed, I felt. Yeah. So uh, nice thing that it goes to overtime when we were the better team in the overtime. That's the right time to be the better team, of course, pick up the extra point. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that was Yeah, and also, game. thankfully, Arizona is not too much of a threat in the Pacific, so True. giving up that extra point wasn't a big deal breaker and it's good that they got it plus it's another row column yes win so a regulation or overtime win that's what row stands for um so that that is a tiebreaker when it comes down to points being tied at the end of the season so it's good for them to get that uh overtime win um against a divisional opponent yeah so then uh, we go into winnipeg and uh again another three two overtime win uh this this is a three overtime games in a row now yep. that that the sharks came out on top which is amazing so uh that one was really interesting because actually winnipeg coming off of a big nine three win against the mighty anna ducks um in the first period they were down six nothing so if i'm giving any credit to them the rest of the game it was three three 
So, <laughs> but sure. they're good credit. hot garbage. I'm, I'm trying. Right. I'm trying, Aaron, okay? Right. Um, but yeah, so Winnipeg coming in with a lot of confidence in that game. Obviously, John Gibson retaining his all star form. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, one of those games where, uh, you know, the Sharks come in, play hard. Um, they're without Dustin Bufflin, I believe, during that game. So that helps, yes. Um, but well, the Sharks were without Carlson. Exactly. So, you know, I, that's fair. Tip for tap. Fair trade. Uh, they're different. Very different players, but but I think Bufflin stirs Winnipeg's oh, drink in the yeah. same way that Carlson does Definitely. for the Sharks, yeah. right? So uh, a really good effort by both teams, but Sharks prevailing there. I think uh, a lot of people think this could be a conference finals yes. um, matchup, so it's a good good preview, and and thankfully the Sharks came ahead again in mm-hmm. overtime. Um, but what we saw, the Sharks took a lot of penalties in this game, yes, uh, and a lot of stick infraction penalties, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. So. Um, the good news is those penalties are avoidable. Uh, you get your feet moving, you're going to take less stick penalties uh, if you're in the position correctly. So right. um, I, I don't think you can read too much into this. I don't think I don't think referees will call that many penalties in the yeah. playoffs. So um, you know who knows? It, it's kind of a preview, and I don't really like to say that too much. I like to think of that game. You look at that game and you go, okay, if we played a seven game series against the Winnipeg Jets. Do you think we could come out on top? Right. I think we can. Obviously, I'm biased, but um, <laughs> I think we can. And but I also think it's going to be tough because you give up those power plays. That team has a dirty power play, rivaling, I'd say, the Sharks yeah. on their power play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if there's much else to say about that. It was just a really good game. Uh, two teams, powerhouses, playing well. We are now, well, now, I and mean, we haven't got through the rest of the games. But looking at the current standings, we're one point behind Winnipeg. So, uh, and that's, they're the Western, the oh. leaders in the Western Conference, yeah. right? So, uh, only only folks above us, Calgary, and that's the next game we jump into, Calgary right. Flames. 5-2 win. Uh, again, a, a, a big, big buildup to this game. You know, we kept talking about how there was going to be, you know, fisticuffs and whatnot. And I was saying it's going to happen in the very f- beginning of the game, right? We're going to have see Kane do his thing, get out there. And then that's going to be the end of it. You had a, a Twitter poll or Facebook poll, I believe, or both, maybe. Both, yeah. yeah. And the the question was, are they going to have 50-plus penalty minutes across the game or yeah. not, right? What do you think, the over-under? And I did take the under because I figured it's going to happen right away, and then it's just going to be normal penalties after that. Well, it didn't even happen. Mm-hmm. So, And that was one of the things that the guys were saying, the broadcasters were saying after the fact was, you know what? They decided in this game to beat them on the scoreboard and not beat them with their fists. And it's not going to be the last time we play Calgary, so there will be plenty of chances to do that. But in a game where you're trying to get the points and you're trying to get ahead, the best way to beat them is by taking those points away. And that's exactly what they did. Yep. Yeah. I I thought it was a fun game. Um, I think it was great to see the Sharks go in there in Calgary, which is a tough building, and uh, come out with a win and not go into overtime for a fourth straight game. Uh, So that kept definitely kept Calgary from getting the points, and the Sharks are catching them, if not surpassing them, hopefully, very soon, very very soon. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So I think I think uh, I'd mentioned this before about Calgary about um, their goaltending situation. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of their Achilles heel, Um, and we saw it in this game where Riddick started the game, and Riddick has been kind of the hotter goalie as of late for Calgary, Mm -hmm. Um, and he gave up two goals, and the second goal was was a terrible giveaway to Burns shorthanded. Shorthanded, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, Burns just buried it in the empty net. And they pulled him instantly after that. Now, that's sending a message not to just your goalie but your team mm-hmm. um, that you need to play better. But um, my whole point is that the, the Calgary Flames have two goalies who are good. They're good goalies. None of them are elite. Right. Um, they kind of play the hot hand, but when you get closer to playoff time... You need to pick one, and you need to throw your confidence behind that one. Mm-hmm. And right now, Calgary doesn't have that. They have two good goalies, but they don't know which one to start. Yeah. So uh, going into the playoffs, I can see them starting one goalie, and then they lose. You go to the other one, and they win or lose, and you you just you kind of trade back and forth. And I don't think that's a, a recipe for success in the playoffs. And we could also see that uh, come to bite them at the end of the season, and then they are going to drop in the standings because of it. That's what I think. And, and it's interesting because in the beginning of our, our show, really, you had said that there's going to be some pretenders in this division, and Calgary's not one of them. Calgary's a legitimate contender. And they might be, but 
what you just said about the goaltending situation, that pulls them back a little bit. I mean, they could be legitimately a good team, but when you're going back and forth between these two goaltenders mm -hmm. and you can't pick one come playoff time, like you said, that's going to hurt your team. It's a confidence issue. You have yeah. to have full confidence uh, behind your starter, and when you don't have that, your team feeds off of that. Yeah. So uh, they give up a soft goal. In this case, Riddick gave up that soft goal, and, and the team could not recover. They pulled him right away and put in Smith. And Smith did not fare better. He gave up a goal. I'd say I think it was 22 seconds after he comes in. Well, well, first of all, uh, how did what did Smith do before he got in? Oh, right, I, he's mouthing off to Vander Kane on the bench. Yeah, uh, I guess Kane had was saying something to one of the guys on the bench there, and and Smith was sitting there and he's you know barking at him and whatnot. And it's like as soon as Smith goes in, first shot on goalie faces goes in. Yeah. It was just. That for me, I was just sitting there going, yeah, you know, just <laughs> take it, you know? I mean, that so, was a tough goal to give up, too, because yeah. it was a tip. It, the puck was going wide, and the guy tipped it in through sure. his leg, so it's not an easy save to make. Uh, absolutely. But, yes, yeah, so that's fantastic. But that it just, it just, I don't care here, how it goes in. Here's it, some crow. It Eat felt it. so good. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, hmm. it was just really good for me to see that. So anyway, um, the, in that game, we had, what was it, Hurdle had two goals and one assist, mm -hmm. right? And also of note, Kane had two goals and one assist, and you know exactly where I'm going to go with this right yeah. now. Kane only had one penalty, a cross-checking penalty, and it came late in the game. Now, I, that <laughs> stuff, you don't want to do that come playoffs because you never want to give them the opportunity to come back into the game, but in the regular season, okay, if you're going to give them a little chippy, you know, I, what for? I also thought that that was a soft penalty. Sure. I think the refs... I've seen worse that didn't get Absolutely. called. Absolutely. Um, I think because the Sharks were already ahead, if mm -hmm. it was a closer game, they wouldn't have called it. Um, I just, I mean, he kind of skated, and he, yeah. it was a penalty, sure, but the guy, I think it was Monaghan, he, he hit the ice pretty easily, yeah. and I think uh, he dressed it up a little bit. I, I don't think, I don't really fault Kane too much on that. Sure. I don't, I don't mind him doing that yeah. stuff. Well, so, uh, okay, then then I guess what we're saying is we're agreeing here then because if you're saying that one shouldn't have even been a penalty, what I'm saying is he's not taking dumb penalties, and look at him. He's getting a couple goals now, right? Sure. So, yeah. And this isn't the first time now. This is a couple games in a row he had two goals, right? Mm -hmm. So he's, he's producing offensively. He's still being a threat out there in terms of you mess with anybody on the ice, I'm going to get in your face. He's an intimidator out there. I, I almost want to call him the snipe forcer. Like I think the snipe, the snipe forcer. forcer. That's his role. How about he, a power forward? Yeah, he's a power forward, <laughs> but he's no. But he's he's so deadly with his shot. He's not just like the big body. He's so deadly with his shot, and he's an intimidator, right? I, I snipe forcer. I'm just what I'm gonna call him. Well, he's named after Vander Holyfield. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So, he knows out of box. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So yeah, uh, I mean, it was just again a really great game. Um, awesome to see another really great game that we played. Edmonton Oilers. Uh, fantastic yet again. Uh, <laughs> was that four wins for the Sharks this week? Four in a since row. Since our last show. So um, going into Edmonton, Edmonton's not doing so well. Uh, kind of like the Ducks. <laughs> they they are just, they have a lot of internal issues. Um, they just fired their GM. In fact, right. when we were at the the All-Star Skills, com or before the Skills Competition, the media, media night, day. Yeah. Um, that was the first time, which I didn't realize, it was the first time McDavid and Dreisaitl had been in front of the media since Chiarelli got fired. Yeah. So they were just, you know, you could just <laughs> read their body language. They did not want to be there. So they're just dealing with that. I mean, Edmonton is, is one of those, you know, under the microscope type places with media. So there's just media everywhere, especially when you have the greatest player in the world on your yeah. team. So... Um, I, you can see when things are not going well, they are really not going well. Um, anyway, having said that, going in, they start Aaron Dell in this game. I think it's a fantastic move uh, to put Aaron Dell in, give Martin Jones a little break, give Aaron Dell some work. Uh, it's about one every four games. Yep. And uh, he's a great goalie. He made some good saves. I thought he played well. Um, I think um, the Oilers just, they had some chances. They rang some off the post. They, they, the game really could have gone the other anyway. Yeah. Um, thankfully, it went for the Sharks. So, um, I LeBanc had a hat trick, right? Yeah, in that game. That was uh, that was, you know, for me, I keep hearing all these people saying, "Oh, let's trade LeBanc," right? And you brought up a good point earlier. I think you might have brought up in the live was, um, you know, I don't know that it's everyone hating LeBanc and wanting to get rid of him, as so much as if we are going to move a piece they're okay with giving up LeBanc. And I thought yeah. that was a great point. Exactly. Because I think when, 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 especially as a player, if you keep seeing everybody in the fan base saying trade LeBanc, trade LeBanc, it's not so much that we we don't want LeBanc there. It's, it's just that, you know, to get the piece that we need, 
he's an acceptable piece mm -hmm. for the us to move. And I can I can see that because he's again he's a he's a third line guy essentially, right? Well, it's the same people that say trade Vlasic because he isn't playing well. It's like. <laughs> No, we, you know, you're not playing well. Whoever the scapegoat is, go okay. trade him, right? That, that's what happens. So LeBanc wasn't playing so hot a month right. ago, right. and then he eventually got scratched for a couple of right. games. So uh, people are like, oh, LeBanc, trade him. He's not, he's not doing so well, but <laughs> he's worth a lot. But on the Sharks... That I don't get. I, yeah, I don't understand how a player is worth a lot, but then you want to get rid of him because he sucks. Right. Right? So... Yeah. I don't know. But for me, it was just a great moment where he scores a hat trick and it's just like, you know, hey, all the haters can just kind of close <laughs> their mouths, at least for this night. You yeah. know, for this night, it is my night. You know, to, nobody can say anything about me tonight. Yes. And the nice thing about that hat trick, obviously, being his first in the NHL, it was one that he'll never forget because the Jumbo yeah. ties Gordy Howe for the all time assist leader, number nine on that list. It's incredible. And he, he does that on the hat trick, uh, on the third goal of the hat trick. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, I mean, the first hat trick I ever scored, it's, you know, Jumbo yeah. tied Gordy. It's like, it, like really? You yeah. know? So uh, it's, just, it's just a really awesome, awesome moment. And again, the milestones just keep, you know, stacking up, not just for Jumbo, but for everybody on, on mm -hmm. the Sharks team now. We're just, it just keeps building and building and building. Yeah, can you imagine after LeBanc retires and however many years that is, he looks back and goes, yeah, my first career hat trick was an assist from Joe Thornton, the Hall of Famer, yeah. who is enshrined, like, just, right. yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. It, it's just, it blows my mind a little bit. <laughs> no doubt. So, yeah, uh, like we said, Dell played pretty well in that game. Um, I was happy with what I was seeing. There was a couple of times where he looked a little bit down and out, but there were plenty of times where he made really big saves, a lot of really in-close saves as well. Mm -hmm. And against a team like Edmonton, where they have a few pieces that are really dangerous, um, you know, Nugent Hopkins got that goal where um, Dell was was down and out as well. Yeah, there there you are a few really pieces. Fault him on that goal. Uh, no, right? absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, I felt like there were lots of times where there were, there were big chances, and you know, sometimes they capitalized on it. But there are times where he robbed them. Mm -hmm. So I was I was really impressed with with Dell's play. It's exactly what you want out of a backup goaltender yeah. going into playoffs, and you don't have a situation like Calgary yeah. where Dell's outplaying Jones, and everyone wants Dell in the right. starting, and then they actually do it, and it just becomes a convoluted yeah. mess. So. Um, good for good for Dell. Good confidence booster. Good for the team, and they continue their four, five game win streak. So this yeah, this week they won four in a row. Right. Prior to that, there was the overtime game in Washington that was five in a row. Prior to that, it was the three losses in a row, and prior to that, seven straight wins. So now, if you take a look at the whole thing, <laughs> twelve wins, three losses, four. Three losses. Right. Yeah. Three. No. Three. Twelve and three. Yeah. Three. Math. Math are hard. So, um, yeah. So twelve wins, three losses. Basically, in every five games, you're gonna lose one. That's what we just did over that stretch. Yeah. I mean, that's. I'm I'm happy with that. I'm totally happy with that. So, I mean, I don't know that there's a whole lot more really to do with this team. We'll talk about maybe one piece that we could be uh, tweaking or adding here and there a little bit later on. But the team is rolling right now. The team's playing very very well. Yep. And part of that has to do with if we go back to that Winnipeg game. Brent Burns um, scoring yet another overtime goal, yeah. right? Um, just incredible risk reward. And we talked about this earlier in the season where um, people were kind of getting upset, especially in that first month, that stretch where Carlson wasn't quite playing right, Burns wasn't quite, like nobody was really kind of gelling, and they were taking too many risks um, coming off the blue line. Right. Lately, it's been working. These last five games, it's been working. So Brent Burns pinches and they score a shorthanded overtime goal against Winnipeg. Now, if you go back and look at that goal, actually it was uh, Pavelski scored it. Um, yeah. Burns passed it over to him. Burns, I think, pinched, got the puck, yeah. and then it was a two-on-two, kind of. I think Burns tipped the pass, and it went up the boards, and he charged up the boards with uh, Pavelski on his left. Right, and he and passed it across. Yeah, passed it across. Got. So if you look at that goal, Pavelski shoots it to the opposite side, mm -hmm. and if he misses that net, that puck hits the glass, rims. rims around, and goes back the other way. And now it's a two-on-one coming back the other way. Maybe a possible three-on-one if another guy hustles yeah, yeah. quick enough. Because then you have Pavelski and Burns who are completely out of position. Yeah. So earlier in the season, you'd, you'd see that happen where they miss the net completely, comes back and it bites them, and everyone throws up their hands and yeah. goes, why are they pinching? And and that the play specifically that I remember where that happened was Evander Kane was last man back, but he also had the puck on a stick. Vlasic had pinched in a little bit more. We were playing against L.A. Mm -hmm. Evander Kane takes the shot. It misses wide, rims around the boards to Kovalchuk. Yep. Kovalchuk goes in and scores. 
So I don't know if that's like a learning moment necessarily, but um, it's you know, again, you're right. If, if he fires and misses, we're, we're going back the other way. Right. You know? I, I just think, and we've talked about this before, and I'll use this analogy again. It's like football. Football, you, the stats show that you should go for a two-point conversion versus a one. You be more aggressive, you get rewarded more, more often than not, and it's a better play. Um, that goes strictly by the numbers, right? Okay. So not that everything needs to go strictly by the numbers, but because the Sharks have such powerful weapons in right. Burns and Carlson on the back end, even though Carlson's not in right now, mm -hmm. um, the better play is to be aggressive and to score. And we've seen Vegas last season pretty much do exactly that, where they're throwing everybody forward with speed and pinching and catching guys off or catching teams off guard and scoring a lot of goals and momentum changer, mm -hmm. huge momentum changer, especially in the playoffs. So I think that's the kind of direction that the Sharks are trending towards wanting to be, and it's been working. Yeah, and, and by by the numbers, I mean, Brent Burns is leading all defensemen in the NHL, so clearly something's working, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it's not like the team's really suffering. We've been winning games. Right. So, uh, and speaking of more numbers, we are on Pavelski goal watch. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have to now? Uh, 29, 29 goals. 29. We One. are 11 away from okay, yeah. 40. <laughs> uh, are we counting to 40? Yeah, we, we are, but I just we're one okay. goal away from, one away from, from that milestone, and then right. we're working on the next one. We're as if we have anything to do with it, right. but, you know, hey. So, yeah, uh, one goal away from 30. I, I feel like Vancouver would be the optimal place to get that 30th goal. Uh, either this tomorrow or yeah. today, yeah. if you're watching this today, right. or on Saturday. They're playing them twice this week. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so definitely a good chance this week that Pavelski will get 30. Very nice. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's we're talking about Pavelski there. <laughs> uh, let's switch gears. We'll talk a little bit about Marco Bard Vlasic. He's back. Um, he looks like he's returned both physically and mentally. I, I mean, I remember telling you guys that I was going to the practices and there was something wrong with his hand or his arm or shoulder, something on the left-hand side. And then the last time I saw him at practice, he looked like he was all back and ready to go. He was fully partaking. Mm -hmm. Now he's in games. We're seeing the games making, uh, his presence in those games making a giant difference mm -hmm. on the scoreboard, particularly the goals against. So if right. you want to jump into that. So the last five games, yeah. the, the Sharks have only given up two goals and there's uh, four games? Yeah, the fifth game was Washington. Oh, right. That Six was five the other one. one, yeah. Sorry. So, um, so what is the stat? Was it the Sharks are 23 and 0 this season when they've only given yes. up two goals or less? So, uh, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the Sharks are the second highest scoring team in the league, so they're going to be averaging more goals mm -hmm. per game. They've been scoring like crazy. Um, so, yeah, Vlasic's return has been amazing. And uh, it's good to see. It's a good timing. And we were hoping that this would happen once he went out in early January. Yeah. Um, he looks great. And um, he, let's see, our, since returning, the two goals against, but the penalty kill has increased. Yeah. So if we look at the stats of pretty much all of January when he missed, uh, the penalty kill was at 71.9%. Right. Um, and since he's been back in these last four games, it's been at, uh, where is it? 88. They've given up... It was 88.9%. 80, mm. So they've given up two power play goals out of 18 chances, um, but they've also scored two shorthanded goals since they've been on the PK. So that kind of negates those two power play goals right. that they've given up. Um, so not quite 100%, but in terms of goals against and for, it's pretty much even. Yeah. So um, the Sharks' penalty kill is going to get better. It's going to look better. Carlson's going to come back. Eventually, who knows when, <laughs> and uh, and it's probably going to get even better. Yeah, and the power play is going to get better too. I mean, I think basically what we're saying is we're trending the right way, with with Vlasic coming back into the lineup. It, there's there's not this uh, struggle for him to reacclimate himself. He's jumped right back in, and we've seen the last four games he was back. We've only let in two goals against in those four games, right? Um, that speaks. I don't think that's by chance. I don't think that's a coincidence. I mean, it's it's a testament to how good Mark Woodward Vlasic mm -hmm. is. And when we get him back in the lineup, fully invested, like we're seeing now, this is what the effect that he has on the game, right? right. When he's shutting down the, the the team's the opposition's best players night in, night out. This is what happens. And we continue our scoring punch, which, by the way, we have plenty of scoring punch, and we'll <laughs> jump into that in a second, too. Yeah. Uh, w when, when we have that scoring punch and he's able to shut them down, that just makes the gap in the goal differential that much wider, mm -hmm. right? And we think we saw a stat, maybe it was since January 1st or whatever it was, but it was like f they're scoring four and a half goals a game, but they're also letting in four goals a game. Right. In these last couple of games, they're averaging two goals against because they've only let in two goals in every single one of those games. But we've always outscored the opposition. 
So yeah, nice to have him back. I'm really looking forward to the rest of the season when we get Eric Carlson back as well. It'll be interesting to see how they may tinker with the defensive pairings a little bit. But I think with the whole defensive core healthy and playing, um, you know, with the right mind, man, we're just unstoppable. I just yeah. don't see it, you know. I don't yeah, see yeah. anybody beating us. I just don't see it. <laughs> we're going to win out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Completely. Completely. Uh, there's a great article on, on The Athletic, if you have a subscription to check out, uh, that Kurz just wrote about uh, Vlasic. And I don't know if they have some animosity between each other, yeah. but... <laughs> There's definitely no love loss between those two, um, between Kurz and Vlasic. Right. Um, but it, it's it's a good read and it's a good look into Vlasic and his, he's kind of like sarcastic in a way or dry sense of humor. So um, he's got some good banter back and forth and I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and and I think we're talking about over that span, the, the Sharks are actually fourth in power play percentage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and... We're talking about offensive punch. We're talking about since January first. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're. I mean, the team is is playing great on the power play, right? Um, the team is scoring goals in bunches. We've seen with Vlasic back in the in the in the pitcher, our penalty kill is showing up. Defensively, we're letting in less goals against, mm-hmm. and this leads into like trade discussions. Do we need to do anything, right? And if we did, what pieces would we add? And we hear a lot of people talking about Simmons. We even heard people talking about Jeff Skinner in the live that we had before this. Yeah, and I don't think we need that type of no. scoring punch. We've already got so many so many goal scorers on the team now. I mean, I don't know what the number is now. If we have like eight people above, you know, thirty points or forty points or whatever it is, but right. it's you know, w- w- scoring wise, I think we're set. I think if we're going to look for anything, we're probably going to be looking for a player that has a complete two hundred foot game, mm-hmm. someone who can play on the PK, someone who's reliable in uh in all zones right uh i think that's what we'd be looking for more so than like a wayne simmons right and we've been talking about this uh, i don't know almost the beginning of the season that's what we've been looking or that we think that the sharks are going to look for and now that malco carlson is going to be out Mm -hmm. we think a separated shoulder um just kind of speculating but it looks like he's going to be out for separated shoulders to come be a couple weeks Mm -hmm. i think um, that leaves a hole on the fourth line, and you, they could fill it with somebody from the AHL, but I think they're going to go out, and that's the kind of player they're going to look yeah. for is somebody that's a PKer, can play 200 feet, and has just a little bit of a scoring punch, a.k.a. another Melko Carlson type player. There you go. So um, I think that's what they're going to they're gonna do. Maybe now that he's hurt, now that Melko's hurt, they might be pulling the trigger a little bit sooner than later, mm-hmm. um, maybe not waiting until the actual deadline, which I think is February 25th. Um, I don't remember, but I think that's off the top of my head. But <laughs> anyway, um, so that that's in the next two weeks. Yeah. Uh, maybe we see something happening. Um, some people noted in the live show that there's been scouts from the New York Rangers um, at a couple of the games consecutively. So that's that could be Kevin Hayes. That could be... Um, Zuccarello. Zuccarello. Yeah. Um, who knows? Um, I'll I, tell you, it's not going to be Lundquist. Right. Just, yeah. It's not going to be Lundquist, people. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've been wrong before, yeah. but it's it's rare. So <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, so yeah. that that's I think what uh, we're gonna see in the next in the coming days. I'm not saying that it's gonna be the Rangers. Just right. Just saying. Somebody noticed that in the live show. <laughs> So anyway, uh, that's that's pretty much all the stuff we want to talk about there. So let's go ahead and look at what's uh, what's coming up in this mm-hmm. week. We've got three games that are on the docket there. So I think we're still away in Vancouver, right? In Vancouver okay. to wrap up the road trip. Right. Uh, Vancouver is Good. They're an okay team. They're they're an up and coming younger yeah. team with some talent. Um, Pedersen is an amazing player. We got to see him. Man, did he look like a boy. <laughs> he was he looked so young, so uh, just bright, bushy-eyed. <laughs> uh, I think he's Swedish. I don't remember. He just he looked like an exchange student that came in from high school, like just this <laughs> little kid. Um, but anyway, I, I'm not talking smack. I'm just no, saying I think he's yeah. a very young and a very talented player. Supremely talented. Yes. yes. Yeah. So he's fun to watch. Uh, they have they have Besser on their team. Yeah. Um, and Goldobin, former Sharks player. There you go. Uh, so apparently he's been linked to trades. They're trying to get rid of him too. They're trying to showcase him. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, a former first-round pick of the Sharks. And like we've talked about before, you yeah. know, sometimes those first-rounders don't pick, pan out, and they get traded, and they don't pan out anywhere. I mean, so it's not that big of a deal that we trade them away. It's interesting, though, because Gold- Goldobin is kind of the same, uh, has the same, uh, I don't know what to say. He's basically like a LeBanc, right? He's got that scoring offense. punch. He's got that offensive yeah. punch. But he's not really that 200-foot player. 
And I, I think I would rather have LeBanc over Goldobin, don't get me wrong, but I think they've got the same cruxes, I guess, if you yes, will, right? Yes, definitely. Uh, the, their offense is not the problem. Yeah. It's their other parts of the game that need work, mm -hmm. and uh, that just makes them kind of expendable in the yeah. NHL because of that. So, um, yeah, so they're in Vancouver um, Monday night, right. or tonight if you're watching on Monday. So um, in Vancouver, I think uh, it's uh, they're going to start Jones, they're not going to start Dell. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think they should pull off a win there unless they take their foot off the gas. But it looks like the Sharks are rolling right now. Yeah, the way they're going right now, I think with all the momentum they've got, I think a win in Vancouver is, is almost expected. But the next game is uh, against Washington. Now, that's going to be at home, though. Yes. So we do have the home crowd behind us on that one, which is great. It's I on think Valentine's Day. Oh, okay. It's a great, great place <laughs> to take a date. They do have the Valentine's Day uh, uh, warm up sweaters, right? They have in the past. So yeah. I'm assuming they're going to so do they, it again. They usually wear they wear these warm up jerseys with it's a heart Hearts instead of the shark's triangle, I guess. Um, and then they sign them and they do an auction, auction for them and all that stuff for later yeah. for charity for probably for the Sharks Foundation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're interested in getting those and go check them out, go get to the game early. Yeah, and you'll see them wearing their yeah. uh, their Valentine's Day warm up jerseys bring your sweetheart and bring your checkbook if you want to get one of those <laughs> things because they're going to go uh, pretty high price yeah so uh yeah uh, anyway washington's washington's obviously the cap the defending returning yeah. champions so they're they're going to be tough and they have pretty much the same team that they had last season uh minus the coach their coaching changed because mm. uh barry trotz went to the islanders that's right yeah. so um they haven't been doing so hot. I mean, the Sharks just played them um, six games ago, was the yeah, last? six five. Right, and that was the overtime yeah. thriller right before the All-Star <laughs> game. Um, that was still, if you haven't watched that game, go back and look yeah. at the highlights. It was crazy. Um, so uh, what do you think? you think it's going to be another goal-scoring barn burner like I, that one? I, you know, part of me wants it to be because that was a lot of fun, but at the same time, I kind of want to stick with the theme of Vlasic keeping the goals Shutting against down. low, and yeah, I don't want to be wrong on that, so please like keep the goals down. It, this is so. another team that has a very potent power play, yes. and you want to stay out of the box and not give them opportunities. Yeah. Um, Ovechkin in his office in the little half circle there, or the circle, um, just incredible. Yeah. He is amazing. We were talking about how amazing Brent Burns was during the live show, uh, doing what he does at his age. He's 33. Ovechkin is doing thing. He's he's like the highest paced goal scoring season that he's had in his career at this age, which is nuts because he's yeah. had some crazy goal scoring seasons. Yeah. So um, one of my favorites to watch. I, I love Ovechkin. I love I love goal <laughs> scorers. So I love I love how he what he does, and it's amazing. It's fun to watch. Uh, this is this is still a uh, San Jose Shark show, uh -huh. um, but he's just well, kind of fanboying I, on all this. I, I <laughs> along with yeah. a bunch of other people, see the see the Capitals <laughs> as the Sharks of the East, and oh, I was yeah, very yeah, happy yes, to yes. see them win. So I I they, I would say they're probably my second favorite team behind the Sharks. Okay. I love watching them play. That's fair. So yeah. So I'm excited to watch that game. So we'll stay at home and, and we'll allow Vancouver to come to us this time. Right. So that one, again, I think with the home crowd behind us and Vancouver being a so-so team, as long as we keep rolling and Vancouver, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Washington may break up that flow a little bit. If they have anything to say about that game, it may bring us down a little bit against the game, uh, against I don't know. The, I have a Vancouver feeling, team at home. I don't know this off the top of my head, okay. but I, think, I don't think Washington does well on the West Coast tour normally. Oh, okay. And it's usually an East Coast team coming over here. They just don't do well because they're not adjusted to the time change and all that stuff so their bodies are a little bit off that would be a uh, that would be welcomed right i would take that I'd be happy i think that's an it. advantage for west coast teams because yeah. they're used to the travel versus the east coast teams are not yeah potentially sure yeah. so well Van vancouver they're just going to come from the north that's it but right. uh i again I, I feel like that's a very winnable game more winnable than being in vancouver we, you got the home crowd behind you do you so. start dell on that Saturday night Vancouver game? I kind of, I would think that I would. I would think I would go Jones, Jones, Dell. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because you want Jones in against Washington, I would think. Yeah. But uh, I don't think Vancouver is really threatening for, for anything uh, in terms of, you know, Pacific Division. But they're, they might be fighting for a wild card. They're exactly. going to come out hard. They they're are going to come out hard. They're close to a wild card, so they're going to be yeah scrambling for points. Yeah. So, yeah. But I don't think if you if you were to give up a point to them, it's not nearly as bad as giving up a point to like Calgary, right? Right. Yeah. So I mean, you could you could play Dell and not really worry about it. But Dell's he's been playing great exactly. lately too. So you know, 
I think, again, let's go back to what we've been saying about the goaltenders, <laughs> right? What have we been saying? It's not the goaltenders. It's not the goalie. It's it's yeah. the defense in front of them, right? As long as your defense is playing great in front of them, which, again, the Vlasic, team defense. The team defense, yes. And Vlasic, I'm calling him out because he is a defense man, but I am saying team defense here. But with Vlasic back in the lineup, we have been looking a lot better defensively. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. If we get Eric Carlson back and we're possessing so think, the puck even more. you think we see Eric this week? I would love to see Eric because he week. he supposedly um, might play tomorrow. Yeah, uh, he might still join them on the road trip. Um, if he doesn't, that's another three days off because yeah. he's not playing until Thursday. So uh, I hope we see him this week. I hope this doesn't linger on and and linger on, yeah. and then people start asking and asking. Right. So <laughs> no, and, and I, I'd love to see Eric Carlson back because he's just a great talent fun to watch yes at the same time if you're 85 percent ready don't come back if you're 90 percent ready don't come back there's really no reason we're rolling right now and and there's no reason to rush him back in you know i would say yeah. just roll the way that we're going right now be happy with the wins that we're getting if we get a loss here and there okay it's not the end of the world I want him back 100% ready to go. I don't want him to agitate anything farther than than he already has. The All-Star game didn't agitate it anymore, trust me. Um, a game will. If he goes into any game, it will because you're going to be doing much harder turns. You're going to be taking mm-hmm. hits, that kind of stuff. If you're not 100%, please, Eric Carlson, if like you're watching the show. If yeah. you're watching the show, okay? If you're not 100%, please don't come back. Just just take your rest, buddy. So that's my advice. Like, he needs to take it from me. Sure. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, um, but that's those are all the games. So uh, I, I think that's that's all there is to say about that. So um, was there anything else? Merch. Yep. Yeah. Just our merchandise. Uh, please hit up our store if you want to support our, support our show. Yeah. Uh, all the proceeds go to help running all this because we are definitely not making money on this show. <laughs> so uh, we have T-shirts, we have stickers, we have hats. Uh, you can check it all out. Yeah, and uh, we appreciate it. Also, please do make sure that you are subscribed because we do go live, and when we do, you'll get the notification saying that we are live, and we love having those interactions. We've had a lot of people jumping in. What was it, Montana? Yeah, Arkansas, Ottawa. Uh, gosh, Vancouver, was Vancouver. Some someone was in Oregon, I think. Yeah, I, all over the place, and uh, just it's great seeing that there's like Sharks territory fans all over the place, and they're all coming and, and watching us, and I love it. So uh, please uh, do subscribe. Please share us with your friends. We love having the interactions, and the more we can do that, the better. And the bigger to the fan base we can reach out to, yeah, the better for us and better for them, I would think. Mm-hmm. So. I guess that's it. That's it. Okay. So that is the end of episode number 36. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode, and if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.